All right, um, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I haven't ever done one of these right, before. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I haven't actually done one of these before. <laughs> um, so um, I just finished uh, a sketchbook, so I'm just gonna kind of take you guys on a tour with that. Um, and I'll also kind of show you kind of what I have in my little sketch kit here. Um, so if you're thinking of kind of building a quick little kit uh, to take out and sketch with you, um, hopefully I can I can give you some ideas. All right, um, so let me go ahead and take the giant text label off. Um, let's get started. All right, so I'll just kind of push my sketchbook to the side there, a little piece of board here. Um, and I'll kind of go through the contents of, of my typical sketch kit and that'll give you kind of an idea of what to expect kind of going into my to my actual sketchbook. Right. Um, so this case, um, I basically got, I think it was at like Hobby Lobby or, or some big box store. Um, you can get something similar a lot of different places. The brand doesn't really matter. It just holds a few tools and it zips up nicely so it's easy to kind of grab and go. Um, so typically when I'm sketching, I actually prefer to sketch in ink. Um, just because the ink sketches tend to hold up better in your sketchbook for a long period of time. I'm sure everyone who's like sketched in graphite knows it kind of smears and degrades over time. Um, and that way, if you're like years later looking through your old sketchbooks, trying to find some good ideas um, that maybe you didn't have the ability to execute well back in the day, um, you know, you can't actually read what's going on anymore. Um, anyway. Uh, plus, working in ink also forces you to kind of think a little bit harder about what you're doing. Um, you know, once you make a mark, it's permanent, so you have to learn how to adapt to mistakes you make, and you also have to kind of think through each stroke as you're doing it, um, rather than kind of just relying on, you know, making a giant mess and cleaning up later with your eraser. All right, uh, so kind of going through my tools, um, I basically have three different Faber-Castell pens. Um, I have like um, an S, an F, and a brush pen. Um, and these are basically just um, felt tip markers. Um, they are... Uh, the brand isn't super important. I like Faber-Castell because they have just kind of a simple like set. Um, so you don't have to like work too hard, I guess, to figure out which sizes you need or anything like that. Um, hold on just a second. I need to kind of turn off the autofocus on my camera. It's going to get really fuzzy and weird stuff is going to happen. Okay, so hopefully that'll cause that to stop happening. Great. Um, so in addition to that, um, I have a couple of mechanical pencils, um, and these don't have to be anything fancy, just like a big pencil will do. Um, and that's just to kind of uh, lay out if you're doing something a little bit more complicated, give yourself some basic shapes to work within, then an eraser to kind of clean clean out those lines after you're done with the ink sketch. Um, and I also have just a ballpoint pen. Um, so you'll see kind of some of the sketches I have are done with a ballpoint pen. This ballpoint pen is not special in any particular way. It's a, it's a Schneider Slide Rave XB. I don't know if I can get that to where you can read it. Probably not. Um, but it's just a ballpoint pen that happens to be filled with uh, waterproof ink. So again, just, you know, if I wanted to go in and play with uh, some kind of water-based medium, you know, this will be destroyed less by it than a typical ballpoint pen. But otherwise, you know, if you're just doing black and white, it's pretty much the same as a big pen. All right, and that's pretty much my kit. Um, so now let's go and start looking at the sketchbook. All right. Um, so this is basically just a little standard moleskin sketchbook. Um, 
it's uh i think around five and a half by eight and a half or something like that whatever the standard size is um, i've kind of paper clipped because i have some of my contact information in the front in case it gets lost um so I've just kind of paper clipped that so i don't accidentally dox myself um so the way i kind of lay out sketchbooks um is i kind of the first spread i'll go ahead and make into an index um, and that just allows me to find things later and have kind of a record of what's in here. So you probably can't actually read it because my webcam is kind of garbage. Uh, but um, on the left hand side, I basically have um, the page numbers uh, by month. And then on the right hand side, I kind of have uh, pages indexed by subject matter. Um, and that way I can kind of know like when things were done on this side and, and kind of if I'm looking for a specific type of thing, I kind of have this to go to. Um, and that just kind of saves me time. Like I don't have to like label and date and sign every single page of my sketchbook or, or anything like that. It just kind of like, you know, if I need that information, it's here, but it's not kind of something I have to remember to do or in the moment because um, I can go back every few weeks and kind of index things while things are fresh in my mind. Now getting to the actual artwork. Um, so when I kind of started this sketchbook, I was actually really kind of digging uh, like ballpoint pen sketching. Um, so one of the cool things about ballpoint pen is you can get like a variety of different line weights with the same tool. Um, and it looks a lot more kind of sketchy or more kind of like drawing with a pencil like. Um, and it's also just really easy. Like these, I basically, you can you can draw like super light uh, to kind of lay things out and create some like barely, barely readable guidelines. Um, and then just kind of go crazy with it. Right. Um, so most of the first things in this book are just kind of these weird chimeras where I was basically just, you know, throwing together random animal and people parts and making weird creatures. Um, so this is basically like a little mermaid with like little wings and a, like a buzzard head. Um, I should also note like when I'm playing in my sketchbook, like I'm I'm very seldom looking at references. Like I'm basically just trying to kind of generate ideas, remember things as best I can. If I wanted to go back and paint something like this later, then I can you know kind of look and see how close I was and and kind of refine the various like specific elements so that they're a little bit more believable. Um, but for the purposes of the sketch, like you just kind of want to get a good idea. And then again, you can kind of look up if, you know, that's actually what a buzzard beak looks like, you know, after the fact, if you want to do a more finished uh, drawing. All right, here's another one of those kind of creatures. Uh, looks like a giant kind of toucan gorilla with like uh, person legs and this pointy spine. Um, uh, I should also note a lot of these like um, I start by just kind of like thinking of like large ab like abstract shapes and then filling them in with different kind of creature bits. So you see a lot of that. Um, I get kind of better with with clear kind of clearer shape design as we go through the book. I think um, hopefully I do. Um, but that's kind of like my process is just kind of drawing shapes and then filling them in with you know different animal parts. So it's kind of like you know one part random, one part kind of cloud spotting. Um, these next few pages are actually kind of a rarity. Uh, it's the one time or a couple of times that I use this sketchbook uh, for some figure drawing. Um, so they're basically just some drawings of a model um, at a local art event. The one uh, pencil drawing in this sketchbook.
All right, now we're back to monsters. Uh, so this has this weird like biomechanical spider legs. Um, this is probably one of the, the weaker actual drawings in here. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like I think this, you know, this is one of the things that it could be cool but the execution isn't the best. All right, and this is a little demon guy with little staff. Um, this is actually kind of fun. Um, I think I did a process GIF of this, uh, or GIF. Oh my goodness, um, I suddenly don't know which which it is. <laughs> anyway, I, I did a little uh, process image of this, which, which kind of showed the stages of digital painting. Um, I'm not sure where that ended up going, or if I still even have it. Um, it was kind of a like a couple hour like afternoon project. All right, all right. This little pineapple guy. I remember like I was drawing a bunch of things which were kind of dark before, and um, I was trying to draw something cute. I think somebody suggested I should try drawing something cute. So this is what I tried to draw that was cute. This little one-eyed pineapple man. I think he's kind of cute. Right. And this is kind of like a floral fairy. Um, so I kind of like fairies that aren't like all attached. Like they're kind of like magic animating a bunch of different kind of like natural elements. So you have these kind of like leafy things. The wings almost look kind of like uh, those little like maple whirly things. Um, maple seeds. And it's all kind of like cobbled into this humanoid form. Um, that's definitely something that you could iterate on for like five of these sketchbooks and never kind of arrive at the best solution. This is a space dog with blue jeans. Right. It's like a giant lizard guy. Um, I think I was I just watched a video on YouTube or something about the slod uh, from D and D. So that was kind of in in my head when I was doing this. It's a random dwarf face. Um, so I don't know why, for some reason, when I'm drawing like dwarves, I like the nostrils to be above the eyes, like their nose is like up on the top of their head. It's not quite that far in this one, but like, um, I don't know, I feel like that just looks uh, more interesting. I guess whenever I'm try drawing like generic fantasy things, I want to kind of make them le more different than just like stretched or squished humans. Like I'd, I like to kind of like mess up their facial features a little bit more too just to kind of set them apart. All right. Um, so this is apparently some kind of stenographer that's walking on its hands um, and riding with its feet or smaller hands. Yeah, I don't know. I got nothing. This is like an Efrit or a Fire Elemental type guy, I guess. Right. Um, this is where I kind of stopped using the ballpoint pen and started um, working primarily with felt tip pens. You can kind of see like the darks are so much darker. Um, and this is actually one of the ones I did better with kind of working in chunky blacks. Um, so it kind of reads really well, even with the low quality camera I'm using. So, you know, compared like this, which seems kind of light um, and sketchy, um, whereas like the felt tip pen is like super duper solid, easy to read. So this is just like an old druid guy, got a little, his little sickle and his little staff. Right. 
So from here on out, a lot of this sketchbook is goblins. Um, you might recognize some of these goblins um, from an illustration I did of like, it's like five goblins um, just kind of like party pose. Um, I think I just, it's just called Goblin Party. It's, it's on my website, but um, you'll recognize some of these goblins as kind of being prototypes that ended up kind of turning into those goblins. Um, so here's like a goblin rogue with a big hat like a goblin magician. Um, it's a goblin archer. Warrior. Um, and I kind of wanted to round out like a five-man like adventuring party. Um, so I wanted like a goblin healer, um, but a goblin cleric Healer doesn't really make all the sense in the world, so I kind of thought of him more as like an apothecary, so he just has all these random things um, that he uses to like heal people. Uh, whatever this gooey stuff is. There's a goblin bard. Um, goblin warlock. He's got some goo. Alright, this is another kind of rare page because I was actually plotting um, a larger charcoal piece for a local exhibit. Um, so again, um, it's written in my index at the beginning kind of what this is so that like five years from now when I look at this and I'm like, what, what was I doing? Um, then I kind of have an idea of what it was. Um, so there's like details about the show and stuff in the, in the index. All right, here's a goblin butcher. Um, here's a lady goblin, kind of like a pirate or something. Um, here's another goblin with just like a giant skull on his head. This is also a weird page because, like, um, I had watched a video online um, about um, basically like creating idea webs for illustrations to kind of um, have illustrations be kind of more story driven, which I think is one of the weaknesses in my work in general. Is I'm very um, I'm very kind of image focused. Like, I get a cool like image. In my head, and I want to I want to make that, um, but there's not necessarily like an easily inferred story um, or kind of a way for people to connect to it um, quite so well, um, which is something I've been trying to work on. Is kind of um, thinking more narratively, um, making work that has more kind of obvious stories going on in it, because um, that's just something that I I think would help my work. Um, next few pages are going to be like various like weird takes on magicians. So you have like this older guy with this weird floofy suit thing. He's kind of like a moon magician. Very kind of World of Warcraft night elf inspired probably. Here's a little bent, kind of like grandma, like hedge witch type character with the giant floofy bloomer, or I don't know what those are called, but you know, the, the underdress floofy pants, whatever those are. Here's kind of like a, a swashbuckler. like a little gnome looking guy. Here's an angsty teenage necromancer. Um, this one I think I kind of oops and made like a Disney character somehow. Very kind of Esmeralda vibe. 
We got some kind of like paladin or magic knight of some sort. Um, and here's like some kind of like elf. All right. So at this point, I kind of put the sketchbook down for quite a while because um, I had. I think this is around the end of last year, so the holidays came up and I didn't have a lot of time to sketch or draw. Um, and what time I did have, I was kind of spending doing other things. Um, so you'll kind of see like a pretty big jump between this page and the rest of the book as far as like just the amount of time and effort I put into each of these pages. <laughs> as you can see here, it's very simple, kind of lined. Um, so starting with this little guy, I started just going crazy with hatch hatchwork, um, working on kind of creating more value and less kind of just like line drawings. Um, so this is really also when I started just kind of loosely sketching out some basic shapes um, and really working to kind of fill them in and kind of graft anatomy on top of them. So here, you know, I have like just a giant triangle uh, for the head and, and kind of like filling it in like that. That's a little knife there. Alright, it's another goblin. Um, goblins are just fun because they don't have to be symmetrical. They, they don't have to like have correct proportions. Basically like as long as you like draw convincingly, literally anything will look great if it's a goblin, because, you know, goblins are messed up little weird things, so it doesn't really matter what they look like. Uh, so it's very liberating. Fun to sketch. All right. <laughs> this is just like a really sad night guy. I was having a really bad day, um, and I felt obligated to draw something, and this is what happened. And uh, it is very sad. It's it's technically not super great. It's not super well planned out or executed. Um, but this guy looks like I felt that day. Um, and I don't really do that very often. So, uh, yeah. Right. Here's another goblin. This one with a speedo. Um, and slightly more elaborate hairstyle, I guess. Right. Here we have a little potato goblin. Um, I always joke whenever I'm telling someone how to draw something, I always say start with a potato, um, then add arms, legs, and a face, um, and then erase the potato when you're done. So there's a very clear potato shape going on there. <laughs> now, I, I always forget this guy's in here, and he just makes me smile every time I see him. He seems very proud of something. Oh, I remember this fairy uh, was actually back in February. Someone had told me about the, the hashtag February fairy uh, thing on Instagram. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll draw some fairies. Um, so again, kind of like the detached wings and kind of the weird facial features. Right. This is just a pig man. Um, I guess I just really wanted to try doing some more furry texture. Which I think it worked out pretty well. Okay. Here's another kind of creepy fairy. I also really liked, like drawing little holes and things. I don't know if you can see those clearly, but they're like little holes all throughout. Um, I don't know, it's super, super fun. Kind of creepy. Um, this is just like kind of a weird like forest spirit type guy. Um, I think his pose is kind of boring. He just looks kind of derpy, like just kind of sad, just like Mwah. He's got his little sad wings and like little broken horn and little weird hand toe things going on there. <laughs> I forgot this was in here too. Uh, so 
Uh, kind of going back to my roots as I finish this out, uh, I just started throwing together animal parts. Um, so this is like a horse-headed man rocking out with a bug like lower torso and like chicken legs. Um, could probably compose this type of creature a little bit better, um, but it's it's weird and fun. So whatever. This is actually probably my favorite drawing in this sketchbook. Um, this is just so um, kind of alien looking. Um, My, my sketching process is kind of random, like it is a lot of just drawing random shapes and fitting things into that. And one of the benefits of that is you often end up creating things that you don't really, uh, that you can't imagine, right? Because um, if you're relying on your memory and just kind of relying on, on trying to draw specific things to generate ideas, um, you're limited by what you've seen and what you've experienced and what you like know about. Um, Whereas if you kind of start more with just kind of basic shapes and kind of filling them in and kind of layering different anatomical structures on top of, of something a little bit random, um, you'll often end up with things um, that you would never have imagined that you would come up with. Like, um, I never set out to make whatever this is, um, but like, it's cool. Um, I kind of wanted like, do a painting of like this and some other characters like having a big like tea ceremony type thing or something like that um it's just really interesting what happens when you kind of throw a little bit of randomness kind of into that process so i like this one right All right, and this is kind of like a weird bull thing. Um, I actually remember I drew this. I had I had just watched another like D and D lore video on YouTube, as as I often do, about rakshasas, and learned that their hands were on backwards. So I like just really wanted to draw like a random thing with its hands on backwards, um, and that was the whole impetus for this. Um, so kind of contrasting with the previous one, like, this thing is awesome, I had no idea what I was doing, turned out great, yeah. Um, this one I had a really clear idea of what I wanted to do, and it turned out, like, really boring. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just a bull dude standing there with backwards hands. It's like, it's not, like, this is exponentially more interesting to me than this. This is pretty generic. Um, Still, you know, practice with fur textures and things. Not waste of time or anything like that. Just kind of shows you that having a more clear image in your mind of, of what you want will often end up netting worse results. All right? And the grand finale. Um, so for the last thing, uh, I knew it was the last thing in this in this book when it fits. I wanted to do something a little bit more complicated or a little bit weirder. Um, I came up with this kind of like biomechanical mask, like kind of skinless, armed elephant, lower body, whatever this is. Um, yep. And that's it. Um, there you go. That's 50 pages basically of random sketches. Um, Kind of flip through them a little bit. Right. Um, so I guess thanks for watching. Um, I don't really know how to end this. Uh, I guess I'll just mention, you know, if you want to see more of my work, uh, I work primarily digitally. I like to sketch and ink. Um, but I work mostly digitally. You can see more of my work over at anthonyjamesrich.com, which is like right there. Um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at anthonyjamesrichart. Um, if you want to support me, um, you can sign up over on Patreon at patreon.com slash anthonyjamesrich. Um, and thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I hope some of this was helpful to you. <laughs>